Tabi tabi po. Hi guys, it's Melissa, your Plantita Abogada here at Tasteful Nodes, coming to you today from Subic Freeport. Actually, I'm not at a zoo, although it sounds like one. I am actually under a massive balete tree. And if you've guessed correctly, our subject for today's video is ficus. And here in the Philippines, this is um, called a balete tree. So I can't wait to get started. So let me go ahead and get through my disclaimers. One, KKB tayo, kanya kanyang bayad. The Western friends, it means that we each pay our own way. If I show you a ficus tree or a rubber tree that sparks your interest, please, please, please don't spend your rent money on it, okay? I will not be paying any plant child support. Number two, I'm not an expert, so please don't refer to me as an expert. Any factual information that I do share in this video will be located at the bottom of your screen and down in the description box down below. Which brings me down to our third disclaimer. Since I am not an expert, anything I say will be based on my personal experiences and observations. And if you are interested in ficus or in rubber plants, rubber trees, please, please, please get a second opinion from people in your area who own these same plants. They could tell you all about the care in your area, the materials required in your area, how much they cost, where you can find them. So again, take everything I say with a grain of salt and get that second opinion, okay? Fantastic. So as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this segment, balete trees are a whole bunch of trees that belong to the genus ficus. So balete trees are pretty, I guess, they have a reputation of their own within the Filipino culture. And that's basically because a lot of balete trees are assigned to hold spirits. So there are spirits that are attached to trees as well as encantos. Encantos are the supernatural beings that our folklore says live in these trees. You know, just as an extra precaution, we do have a saying to excuse ourselves when we're around these trees or near, near them which is tabi tabi po, or please excuse me, or may I pass. There are a whole bunch of ficus trees, as I mentioned, and there's a ficus tree in particular that's really interesting, and if you notice this tree right behind me, that's why I started filming here, it's a strangler fig, it's called, right? And it goes ahead and attaches itself to the host plant, and then, let me show you the leaves right here. So, clearly, this branch right here belongs to the host plant, but these vines right up here, all of these guys right up here, belong to the ficus. And if you see these leaves right up here in this area, those are the ficus leaves as well. And this strangler fig actually will climb its host and engulf it, which is what you're seeing happen right down here in this general area. Yes all over so this i don't know what kind of tree it is i would have thought it was it would be an acacia tree just based on the bark and the branches itself right here but based on those leaves over there i'm not too sure what it would be but yeah so eventually the strangler fig what it's known for is that it'll eventually strangle its um host plant to death but yeah let's go home and let's go talk about more ficus Okay, so we're here, someplace a little bit more familiar, a little bit more comfortable, fantastic. Hey Kylo, can you not? Thank you. We have a whole different bunch of entities that live in our balete trees, according to our folklore. And this can range from the ominous to the non-ominous. Of course, the fun ones are always the ominous ones, so I think we should probably get started with those guys. Among those would be the capre, which is supposed to be this tree giant. If you think Lord of the Rings, not that big. From what I've read, between seven to 10 feet tall. Big people, very woodsy in appearance. Always smoking fresh tobacco cigarettes, right? So these giant fresh tobacco cigarettes. And those guys are generally peace loving, but they're still considered to be part of aswang, which are the ominous types of beings that live in these balete trees, right? With balete trees, when you 
approach one, you're supposed to ask for permission to pass or to loiter or to please don't harm them. Because <laughs> according to folklore, that's when you get the capres angry. Capres are generally peace loving, but when they're pissed, they're pissed and they will hurt you. They will harm you. So capres will harm you if you harm their tree. It's always nice to just respectfully say it, even if it can't. Where's the harm in it, right? Tabi tabi po. Please let me, please excuse me, please let me pass. Since capres are also known to be smoking those tobacco pipes, it's said that if you're walking underneath a baleta tree and all of a sudden you see ash on the ground, floating to the ground, just walk faster and <laughs> get away. So just like the tree giants in Lord of the Rings, they are loyal friends according to our folklore. In fact, when they find a human that they like um, or fall in love with, they tend to be loyal to their friends and allow them to see them. Otherwise, they're typically unseen living in these trees or at the bottom of the balete tree, just sitting at the base. So yeah, you definitely don't want to step on them and use that tabi tabi po often. The second aswang that I would put on the list um, as far as living in balete trees would be the mananangal. And the mananangal is someone near and dear to my heart as an Ilonga. My mom is from Iliilo, so you know, it, it is Panay Island and this is where the Mananangas are really, really known to be from, um, a place called Capis. Aside from dwelling in, in trees, baleta trees included, Mananangas are also known to live amongst humans. And they're able to do this because during the daytime, Mananangas are actually you know, normal looking people or normal appearing. There we go. They are normal appearing. They look like me and you. You wouldn't be able to tell any difference between us. In fact, um, some Mananangas are actually supposed to be incredibly beautiful. And most of them are women. I don't think I've ever heard of a male Mananaga. I could be mistaken. But come nighttime, these ladies drop their bottom halves. And I don't mean like, you know, like their pants or anything. They drop their bottom halves. So from the waist down, you'll have this woman vampire thing if you've seen van helsing and you've seen those vampire those vampire wives yeah yeah so that's kind of like what a manananga looks like in our in our folklore except they have these really long tongues right that they use to eat babies so a lot of pregnant women were told you know were worry about the tick 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 that you hear um, that's typically the sound of a mananangal coming or the tapping sound and she's gonna come and eat your baby yeah like completely horrifying stuff right and as a non-pregnant woman I gotta say someone sucking the life out of me through my belly button doesn't sound like the most appealing way to die it doesn't supposedly from research that I found mananangas are able to be warded off with what is it called? Pagi, right? It's buntot ng pagi, which is tail of a... What is it called? Um, that thing that killed Steve Irwin. Okay, there we go. So pagi is stingray or is it manta ray? I'm not sure, but either way, it's one of those fish, those really cool looking fish with those really long tails. If you've held buntot ng pagi, it has spikes at the end of it that you can supposedly whip the mananangga with and it'll harm her and you know she'll go away i don't know if she'll die but she'll go away the way to kill a mananangga according to our folklore is to make sure that come sunrise her bottom half is separated from her or is kept from her so she can't reattach herself so i guess mananangas are filipino cinderellas <laughs> in terms of they get to go and be who they want to be at night, you know, free of any judgment. And come daytime, they have to go back to being who they are accepted by society and whole and complete. Because it's completely unacceptable for a mananga to be walking around, floating around without her bottom half. Ah, anyway. The third ominous being that supposedly lives in balete trees are tikbalangs. And tikbalangs are, I guess, the Filipino version of a centaur. If you've seen the centaurs in Harry Potter, gorgeous, you know, got those human tops and then the horse bottoms. That's not Arctic Balang. <laughs> Arctic Balang would be like a reverse mermaid where you got the fish head and the human legs. Arctic Balang is a horse 
an upright horse, right? Walking on two legs like it's a human being. So yeah, you've got these horse arms just dangling on the side like you and I dangle our arms on the side instead of all four limbs on the ground. That is a tikbalang. And I'll go ahead and see if I can find a picture to include here. And I mean, these things are wild. Tikbalangs are malevolent creatures. At, at their best, from what I've read, tikbalangs are naughty, mischievous, but at their worst, they supposedly eat people. I'll put the sources down at the bottom of the screen so you could read up on your own, okay? But tikbalangs are said to play or toy with their prey, right? So play with their food before they eat and they will get people lost. So in the Philippines, it's believed that if you keep wandering around in circles, a tikbalang is playing with you. And you probably pass the balete tree or some other big tree, maybe an akasha, but normally a balete. And what you need to do to counteract the tikbalang's actions, I don't know how it makes sense, but it does in our folklore, is to take off your clothes or maybe take off your shirt and um, turn it inside out and wear it inside out. I guess it'll confuse the tikbalang and he'll stop toying with you long enough for you to realize. Because if you don't do this, there are some stories that have said that tikbalangs tend to take a victim from the party once they realize that they're being tricked or they're being toyed with. And that usually is well, the youngest female member of the group. So yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, you could always bring you know, someone young that you don't like, right? I'm cutting this up. <laughs> so those are the ominous creatures that supposedly live in our balete trees. As far as the less harmful creatures that live in the balete trees, we have um, one, the encantos, so the fairy folk. The encantos are supposed to be, you know, like you and me, they're supposed to be elves. So if you think of Lord of the Rings, those are the elves. Those are the encantos. Encantos are known to be beautiful people, but they're also known to be friendly. Now, when I refer to you, refer to encantos as friendly, I refer to them as, you know, inviting you over to their place. You stay a few moments and you come back years later. Yeah, that's what encantos do. So people are wary of encantos, of, of being friendly with them because of the possibility of all the years you can lose, but also because if they hold that much power in their realm, just kind of imagine what they could do in ours, right? So we don't want to offend, tabi tabi po is the phrase of the episode. So the second less harmful being that lives in balete trees would be Nuno Sapunso. And this one's a little bit curious. They say Nuno, Manuno ka. Um, which means you're gonna get Nuno. What it means is something bad's gonna happen to you. So Nuno are usually generally depicted as old, the spirits of older men. And they usually sit on ant hills or termite hills, whatever, really, really tall. Some of them can reach a good height. We have a few on the property, I'll take pictures for you. But that's beside the point. So Nuno also apparently live in balete trees. So Nuno generally want to keep their distance from people. They don't wanna be bothered. And if you offend or irritate or anger a nuno, you're gonna get nuno. Manununo pa. So what's gonna happen? That's not a nuno screaming. That's my kid. So what happens when a nuno gets angry is you know you could see some swelling, you could get a fever, your hair could fall out, that kind of stuff. Supposedly, you can poop blood, that kind of, that kind of stuff as well. You know folklore. Yeah, that's where this stuff comes from. So all of these horrible body aches and pains, that's what Nuno does. So what my family has also been known to do in the past, and this is just as an extra precaution on top of modern medicine. You know, they give you medicine, but my family will also cover all their bases, cross their T's, dot their I's, that kind of thing. And they'll call an albulario, which is a, I guess, a Philippine, medicine man, a uh, faith healer, something along those lines. Usually the albulario will just get like an egg and he'll read an egg. So it's like reading tea leaves, what's wrong with you? And he'll tell you what's wrong. And a lot of times nuno are involved. You, know, you offended the nuno some way, you gotta do this. So a lot of times they say, go back to where you offended the nuno and do this and it'll be all done. So it's just an extra precautionary 
um, step to take just in case something does ail you. So the last being on my list, and this could go either way, but they typically tend to be more peaceful, are duendes. Depending on who you ask, and mythology varies, duendes can either be similar to elves, where they're peace-loving and they're generally generous beings, or they could be hobgoblins, just like those bankers in Harry Potter, where just angry and always up to mischief, no good. So depending on who you ask, that's what a duende could be. Duendes can cause similar problems to those caused by Encantos or those by ca caused by the Nuno. So they always say, oh, baka na duende ka, meaning maybe you offended a duende. Typically, you also see an albulario for that and the albulario will tell you what the problem is. The most famous resident of Balete trees in Manila would have to be the white lady of Balete Drive. And let me tell you, the White Lady of Balete Drive has been the subject of a few movies, lots of stories, lots of eyewitness accounts. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so ghost stories abound, right? There isn't much to say about the White Lady. So when I say White Lady, I'm not talking about someone of Caucasian descent, okay? I'm talking about someone who's dressed all in white. You know, think the girl from The Ring, the one that you're not supposed to watch and she crawls out of your TV, all white, black hair. Samara. Think that. That's what the white lady is supposed to look like. Balete Drive is this really long street in Manila and it used to be a carriage street. This was during the Spanish times even, apparently. Now it still exists to this day, but it isn't what gave it its name. So it does not seem to be the same Balete Drive. The old Balete Drive was littered with baletes all along the road and that's how it ga gained its name. I already told you about how there are supposed supernatural beings that live in balete trees, but this white lady isn't a supernatural being. She is a, an unfortunate victim of an accident or murder, depending on the story. So she is a life that was tragically cut short. The white lady appears to people who are driving vehicles. Sometimes she asks for assistance getting somewhere along balete drive. Sometimes she'll just appear in the back of your car. And that's what the stories are about, is that all of a sudden, the driver of the car looks in the rear view mirror and there's somebody sitting in the back. Surprise, oh my gosh. I would probably crash into a balete if there was one on that street anymore. There is, there are a couple, <laughs> but not as many as I'm sure there used to be. An interesting story though, came from a police captain, I believe, a police chief who was patrolling the area and he came upon a young woman wearing white and he felt sorry for her because it was an area at the time which he said had high walls on the sides because a lot of prominent people lived in the area so their properties were surrounded by high walls blocking out any light on the street. That was a description that was given. And he felt bad for her walking in the dark so he asked if he could offer her a ride. And sure enough, you know, the young lady said yes and accepted the ride. She told him where she was going. When they got to where they needed to go, she was no longer in the back seat. Yeah, we can say he exaggerated, but the fact of the matter is the same police captain, according to news reports, old news reports, was also discharged for refusing, I believe it was for cowardice is the reason, but he refused to patrol in Balete after that incident happened after he reported to his precinct even. So, I mean, to scare someone that badly, there's gotta be some truth to it, right? There is a story, the young lady is said to either have been someone who lived on that road during colonial times, who was just left there to die. But there's a more recent story that might also be quite possible. And that is of a young lady. And this was in the 1950s, according to the news articles that I found. Yeah, these were in the newspapers. There was a young lady who was out joyriding with some friends. Their car had an accident. I believe it overturned and she was thrown from the vehicle. She died on the spot. Supposedly it is her ghost that the police captain saw. At least that's what they believe is that it was a younger woman who was asking to get somewhere and she disappeared as soon as they left Ballet to drive. I'll include that link to that article down in the description box below so that you could have some fun going down some rabbit holes with me. <laughs> 
and those my friends are our philippine supernatural beings that live in balet trees so now that we're done with that part, I wanted to mention that not all ficus are baleta trees here in the Philippines. In fact, I think I have a pretty good representation of what ficus can look like here on, on this table. So on this side of the table, I've got some ficus elastica. Over here, I have a ficus villosa. And over here, let me look at my notes because I can never get his name right, but I adore him. He's just beautiful. Okay, so I got the name. So this ficus is called a ficus benedictiae, and I'll put the name at the bottom of the screen because it's an odd one. But these guys are pretty representative of what ficus can be. Not all of them have to look like the massive and ominous balletta tree. Although I do like balletas a lot for what they've done for the environment. I think they're great and I would love to have some on the property. I do understand that not everyone is comfortable with a baleta tree um, in their immediate vicinity. So there is this baleta in Negros, which is called the Wonder Tree. Let me just get my notes. A friend of mine, Pia, actually visited it and she said it was massive and it looked massive in her pictures. It's just gorgeous. It is estimated to be 1,328 years old. And this was an estimation done by biologists at the local university. It is supposedly the oldest tree in the province and quite possibly in the entire country. But that's not to say that there aren't any other notable balletes in the country itself. There is one in Sikihor where I've seen the pictures, I haven't been, I'm dying, where there is a really clear spring that is at the base of this balete and people are just mystified at, at this site. And it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous view. And I really want to visit it. And it's supposedly about 400 years old. It's located on Mystic Island. So again, there's so much mysticism surrounding baleta trees in this country. So the article I found it in mentioned that Central Visayas, where my mom is from, is actually home of witches, shamanistic folk, healers, and mambabarang, which are people who can cause affliction or death by supernatural means. Yeah, <laughs> that's my bloodline. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's this, gorgeous stream uh, at the base it's it's beautiful speaking of streams there's another one in Rizal so this is in Luzon and it's maybe two two to four hours away I'm not sure but Rizal has this balete tree and according to that same article that I mentioned I already put the source at the bottom so check that article out it's very interesting she visited a whole bunch of balete trees hashtag goals right there so what Cara Santos did is visit a whole bunch of baleta trees and the one in Rizal is 300 years old, so younger than the one in Sikihor. Now the 300 year old balete actually has this underground cave filled with water, so it's an underwater, underground spring, I guess. And I mean it just looks amazing, the pictures look amazing. She said that, <laughs> I'm reading my notes, she said that during the visit she noticed blood smears on rocks near the trees and she was told by her guide that people still practice sacrificing chickens so that they could ask for the safety of people who travel in the area. And there are a few other balete trees that are mentioned but that would probably be the most famous one is the one in Canlaon. These trees actually like I said host an ecosystem for fireflies and that Canlaon balete will actually light up at night with fireflies and also hosts bats whose environment is also being destroyed <laughs> right now at present time due to deforestation and other mining activities in the country. So we need baleta trees in the country to continue to provide, I guess, homes for these displaced animals and others that find themselves displaced because they are really ecosystems within themselves. So the baleta trees that I just showed you typically have these long roots that extend all the way down to the ground. And I'm sure that you took great note of that because it's probably one of my favorite features. And this is kind of reminiscent of aeroids where they've got all of these aerial roots coming out and they tend to reach for, the, for things to hold on to or they tend to reach for the ground. Yeah, baletes are similar to that. These baletes are epiphytic, and just like the tomatoes that you find in your garden, 
you will mysteriously find baletes growing in the oddest places. You'll find them on other trees, but I have also seen them grow on buildings, which is not unheard of. Birds typically eat these figs, and don't forget, figs are also ficus. And so they'll eat these figs, and the seeds will be spread anywhere else where they decide to poop. And those are just like the tomato plants that mysteriously grow. <laughs> Or in, I guess in the Philippines, also chili plants that mysteriously grow in our gardens, right? That is probably the most innocent part about this whole thing, is that these birds spread these seeds. Once these seeds are placed somewhere where the conditions are right, there's a good amount of humidity, there's enough sediment, I suppose, for these seeds to grow, they will grow. And what will happen is, is that as they grow, they'll start trying to engulf whatever they're growing on. Whether that be the roof of the building, a gutter, or another tree. I guess that's what gives the balete its ominous presence, is that it tends to grow on another tree, it tends to grow down first, and as the roots settle into the ground, it'll tend to engulf the other tree, completely suffocating and killing it. And that is the end of my balete bit. As you can tell, I'm a bit fascinated by them. As a child, we've always been told, oh, don't get near that balete tree. You know, so-and-so's brother, sister, cousin peed on it, and the next day their junk was swollen. Yeah, fascinating stuff. <laughs> Aside from their environmental importance, there is a lot of entertainment value to balete trees as well. Let's go ahead and get to introducing these guys on the table really quick, having a closer look at them. I don't have a very big ficus collection. I'm hoping to change that someday. I hope I have a big massive balete. For now, I'll have to be happy with these guys. So I have right here a ficus belga plant and it's a scraggly little fella because I forgot him in my greenhouse and he survived against all odds. But now I promise to take better care of him. This, my friends, is a ficus. Elastica tricolor. The leaves get a little bit lighter as it gets older. So right up here, they're pink. And then right down here, you'll see the little margins are white. Another quite gorgeous plant. Easy plant to care for also. This guy, oh my gosh, I love this guy so much. And I forgot about him. You know, <laughs> a lot has happened in the last few months. Yeah, life. But living in the tropics during rainy season, I mean, oh my gosh, couldn't have had, I guess, a better time for these things to happen. At least my plants were cared for while I was distracted. This is a ficus villosa, and I really, really love this plant. The new leaves are quite fuzzy, and they're very, very pleasing to touch. It feels like cardboard that has fuzz on it. <laughs> it's really, really, it's a lot of fun, truly. But as it gets older, it tends to lose that fuzz and it just remains on the outside margins more than anything. The stems are woody and fuzzy. I've got plans of where to put this guy so that I could see him mature the way he's supposed to. So these are shingling ficus and they will climb and they will shingle just like skindapsis do. And he's such a gorgeous fella. I definitely recommend this guy for any, anybody who likes shinglers. And this guy right over here is a ficus binanjikii. With this one, I mean, I've got multiple stems growing in here three stems and it is just a really full plant the thing about it is according to the internet this plant is a strangler meaning if i put it outside it'll find someone to grow on and it'll, it'll engulf it and it'll just go nuts so it might be my balete but i do enjoy keeping it as a house plant size i think i might do that just for a little bit longer once i put things in the ground here they just tend to skyrocket growth skyrockets at least and they get huge. So this guy should definitely stay in a pot until I'm ready for it, until I'm ready to let it go. Now, let's go see who else I have in my collection. We're gonna have to go for a walk. Let's go. So this is plant number five on our ficus list. And this guy is a victim of the last typhoon, but this is what is known as a ficus elastica. And this is commonly known as Black Prince. It had been butchered during a recent typhoon and we lost a few, but we are gaining some new growth in multiple places, as you can see down here. And let's go check this guy out.
So this, my friends, is the Ficus elastica teneki. And the teneki is characterized by the lack of, I guess, the remaining pink midrib. So the midrib starts changing color. It does have that white variegation, uh, similar to what the tricolor has. But while the tricolor has pink leaves and that pink midrib, the pink midrib tends to stay over time. And the pink does tend to stay over time as well. And let me go show you the last two. And over here, over here is a ficus that is commonly mistaken to be a ficus elastica or a rubber tree. It's actually ficus altissima. And if you have a look over there, this poor guy has actually been subjected to typhoons and human activities such as burning and slashing. And this is all that's left of him, but he used to be quite lush, um, almost as tall as me before everything happened. And he's finally making a comeback now that the rainy season is here. This is the one that's known as the lemon lime rubber tree. Let's go check out our last one. And this, my friends, is my last ficus. And I'm sure many of you know what it is. It is a ficus lirata. And such a gorgeous plant. Um, great. If you like shingling plants, because that's what my lirata looks like right now. And I'll have you have a look right here in the back. Look at that. Look at that. No leaves on the back. None. So <laughs> if you look at it from the front, it kind of looks like a shingler, doesn't it? Just shingling on up. The reason for this, according to my friend um, Jojo Cruzado, who is a admin at the Rubber Plant Society Philippines Facebook page, Facebook group, he says that it is likely due to the fact that this is where it gets the most light. So I will have to turn it in this direction to see if I could get growth elsewhere on this plant because this is not happening. This really looks like a shingling plant at this point and nothing like those pretty fiddly figs that we see um, on Instagram or on Facebook. But it's still, it's still a quite happy plant. It's just a shingling plant now. And that is it for today's ficus collection episode. If you enjoyed the content today, please feel free to give this video a like, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell because we still have Halloween episode five of five coming up. And it's gonna be a fun one, guys. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to this problem. If you prefer written guides or more content than my weekly videos, feel free to check me out on Facebook. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes. And finally, if you just want to look at pretty videos or pretty pictures, check me out on Instagram. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes as well. Okay, guys, until next time. Tabi tabi po. Just kidding. Keep your nodes classy and tasteful. Bye.